Welcome back to Man vs. Meeple, the show where we talk about all things board game related. Today we're bringing you a review of two very good expansions for a game that's been out for about two years now. This one is called Champions of Midgard. It's by Gray Fox Games, and we're talking about The Dark Mountain and Valhalla. Right. These two expansions. I only played the original game maybe a couple times back in the day, mm -hmm. and my memory of that was vastly improved by playing it with these expansions. Yeah. Not that it was a bad game or I didn't like it, but it's much better now, in my opinion. A couple things. Number one, uh, Champions of Midgard, if you haven't played it before, it is a worker placement. You're looking at both of the expansions on a player mat. Right. Now, just to, just to note, this player mat came with the Kickstarter expansion. Uh, you will be playing, if you buy both of the expansions, with just your base map within uh, Champions of Midgard. And then it comes with a couple different sections that you're going to add. The Burgessar, which are the mountain trolls that come with the Dark Mountain. And then you have the Valkyrie boards, which are going to come with Valhalla. And then you have some other uh, components right. which we'll go through that you're going to add. This player mat, which may or may not be available at Gen Con, I think it's also available through Gray Fox's right. website incorporates everything into the game, yeah, which it just is really pulls, nice. Yeah, it just pulls all the boards together. I mean, I think it still works really nicely with the original board and the extra boards, Yeah, but we were lucky enough to get a hold of this mat, so we're using it here today. We're not going to walk you guys through the game, but we're going to walk you through the components and tell you how they expand upon the basic gameplay itself. A couple different things that the Dark Mountain does. Number one, it adds the Burgessar that you can combat very similar like you can to the monsters at the bottom of the board and the Draugr. The only difference between the monsters and the Burgessar is that when you attack the monsters in the base game, you are going on ships and you have to feed your warriors to go across right. the ocean to get there. The Burgessar, you're actually just going over land cards. So these land cards are also journey cards, but you don't have to feed them. But you typically do have to pay your warriors in order to do them. So the right. journey cards there are affected by money. It's, it's quite similar to the, the ships, yeah. but like you said, instead of food, it's money this time. And sometimes, just like with the ship cards, Sometimes there's really little little to no effect. Sometimes it's actually a little bit of a boon where you might get money. Yeah. Why would you want to fight them? Well, just like the base game, at the end of the game, you get five victory points for every set of colors. All of these Burgessar are color-coded. You have your reds, your yellows, and your blues. But the other thing that they give you is they give you green dice. Yeah. This is the big thing. The green dice are the northern archers that will join your party of warriors and be able to use to go out to fight other different uh, creatures within the game. Now, the cool thing about them is that five sides of their dice hit. Right. These guys are marksmen, after all. Absolutely. They're also fabulous at hunting because half of their faces have an elk sign on them. And when you roll this while you're hunting, it doubles the amount of food that you're going to gather when you go hunting. The other thing that the Dark Mountain does that's a little bit different is adds a fifth player. It also adds a couple new player mats for the players mm -hmm. to play that give, of course, special abilities in the game. Uh, adds a new market stall, kind of expands that. And then it adds a lot of Draugr to the mix, trolls, monsters, in each of these different stacks up on the game. Valhalla. Valhalla. This is a completely different beast. Yeah, this is, honestly, uh, both of them are great, but Valhalla is really what makes this game, takes it to the next level for sure. Yeah. And I'll just cut to the chase before we get into the details of Valhalla. What it allows you to do that the original game doesn't do is all those dice that you would roll in the original game and potentially die, die meaningless deaths. Yeah. Not very Viking-like. Yeah. In this, with this expansion, those deaths can rack up and you accumulate tokens that you can then spend and cash in for things. Yeah. So it basically makes all those sort of somewhat disappointing situations where you spend a lot of turns to collect a bunch of dice only to lose them and maybe fail. Yeah. This way you're at least getting some things that you can turn into a success. Let's talk about how that works. Yeah. So uh, in the game you have a Valkyrie board and on that Valkyrie board you have a number of Valkyrie that you can visit through the course of the game. As David said, every time one of your dice die in combat, say it's one of the pink dice or one of the white dice, you're going to gather a token that correlates to that particular color die that you lost. And you're going to place it on your Valhalla board. Anytime during your turn when you take an action, you're allowed to spin that token in Valhalla to get a bonus. Now each of these different Valkyrie cards have a cost to them, right. but they also allow you to get a benefit from using them. The other great thing that you're allowed to do is you're allowed to fight epic monsters in the game now. During every single game, you're going to have three and only three epic monsters that will come out of a total of nine that you can actually play with. Along the top of these are a number of tokens that you'll have to turn in. So you're going to want your warriors to die. And then what it will do is it'll give you a one-time 
cache of victory points, but also an in-game amount of victory points that you can score. Right. The great thing about this is it really opens up the routes to victory, in my opinion. You can really you know, turn those deaths into an additional route to victory in this game, not only with with everything you just mentioned. Yeah. And this uh, expansion, of course, Valhalla comes with its own new dice as well. Yeah. This comes with the... The Berserkers, Berserkers are the pink ones, and then your and Shield, the shield Maidens. Yeah, which are your yellow ones. But that's not all. <laughs> There's even more <laughs> that, this, uh, that this does. So each of the different characters that you're playing with, which have their own inherent variable player powers, will also now come with a leaderboard. And this leaderboard has an ability to it when your leader die procs. What is a leader die? That's also new to Valhalla. Right. Everybody's going to start with a blue die that will have a home on their leaderboard. You can take this leader die out and combat anything in the game. It acts just like any other warrior in the game. But when it procs on a very specific side of it, it's going to also proc an ability for that particular leader, which is another cool thing that happens yeah. in the game. It really brings up some synergies with certain dice, uh, depending on what leader or hero that you use. Uh, I had one during our play where... Uh, it, it basically increased the the uh, strength of all the warriors, the base warriors. So whenever I rolled a success there, it was a success plus one. Yeah. Uh, and, and like Jeremy said, when that thing procs, it can be a really, really big uh, windfall for you yeah. on the turn. You can actually lose your leader they as well. They can die. <laughs> they can die, but you can also get them back from the Valkyrie abilities. Uh, let's just get right into the review. The Dark Mountains in Valhalla adds something very special. It gives you a lot of choices. It opens up the game dramatically for players to decide how they want to approach the game. Now it's not just about going down south and fighting the monsters or going north and doing a drawer. Now you can go to the Burgessar. Now you can use a Valkyrie. Now you can use the epic monsters. Now you can go a destiny route that's mm -hmm. more uh, precarious to what you're deciding to do up on the board. It also opens up all these different abilities because now you have additional market stalls. In turns where you're not doing anything, it even opens up that beggar ability too where you can take resources throughout the course of the game that are better than just what was in the base game itself. Yeah, it definitely adds a lot to the game. Yeah. These, these expansions are not light additions. Uh, with that said, it's not too much that I would say you'd want to play the base game again. I do think these are expansions, particularly both of yeah. them together, uh, expansions that you'd never want to not play with, right? Yeah, I mean, ab absolutely. I both can't imagine taking one of these back out. No, no, and, and it mixes very well. Uh, Valhalla, if you're going to make a decision, you only have an X number of, ma of money to spend, which Va some people do. Valhalla. Valhalla is definitely the one, because the ability now to uh, make decisions where you're going to a particular place, and you're just kind of pushing your luck with the dice. That's what this game is really about anyway. You're pushing your luck, hoping that a journey card doesn't mess you over or that your roll isn't bad. But now it's okay. Yeah, you can salvage that bad you turn. You can salvage that with your Valhalla board and use those tokens that you've generated to do something really cool elsewhere. And that's what I would say from my perspective. I probably didn't like the original game as much as Jeremy did. I did like it. However, I think my one con with the original is probably the same con that a lot of people had, and that is what we've talked about building up all those turns, rolling those dice, and then losing those dice had a bit of an unsatisfying feel to it. Yeah. Uh, it felt like, well, that was kind of a waste of a lot of effort that I just put into that. Now, and we've said this uh, like 13 times now, yeah. salvaging those bad turns and those bad rolls and those dying dice into something where you can, okay, well, I can get these points, or, you know what, no one's taken this uh, creature, so... I'm yeah. gonna put. I'm gonna. I have two two more to get. I'll get those, and I'll get those twelve points, maybe. Yeah, and, and don't forget about the dark mounts too. It is really good. The, the, the great thing this does as well is it adds a lot of different creatures that are different than what the base game was. The trolls have a lot of variety in them now with the Dark Mountains expansion. Uh, the monsters have really cool, unique abilities that the base game didn't have when you Plus add the these archers. monsters in. Like, yeah. I gotta say, <laughs> yeah, doing all those bad. things we just talked about loving to do in yeah. Valhalla yeah. would be a lot harder to do it yeah, would be I mean, without the archers. When, when you, you go to the hunting grounds <laughs> yeah. and you have some archers, you'll never go back to the hunting grounds again without. Well, even going into combat with the archers is yeah. fantastic fantastic because you're going to hit 80% of the time on your roll. So both of them are great yeah. expansions. Check them out. I think they're releasing right now, right before Gen Con. If you guys have questions about them, make them in the comments below. Subscribe to us, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and everything else that we do here at Man vs. Meeple, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Season 2 of Man vs. Meeple is sponsored in part by Cool Stuff, Inc. Cool Stuff, in stock at CoolStuffInc.com.